How's it going, my shrimp people? Dr. Slack and the Slacking Doctor are back with week six, I think, of the uh, PPPL D League. As this week, your Cotswold Whimsicots go up against Shroom Raver and his Parasect Jermaine. His channel, as always, will be linked down in the description. I was actually watching one of his videos while doing my uh, cooking my dinner tonight. And I said this uh, in the update video, which I posted earlier this week, if you haven't seen it already, or technically last week, I guess. I recorded it this morning, breaking the fourth wall, so I'm a little bit all over the place time-wise. But um, I, I admitted in that that I don't generally watch a lot of Draft League content anymore. Uh, but I did go and check out one of Shroom Raver's videos while I was cooking my dinner. And the amount of effort this man put into his like intro storyline and stuff, like, goddamn, I... I haven't put that much effort into a video in ever combined all of my videos. It was crazy. So yeah, if you want to see actual like, like I was talking about storytelling in my update video, like actual storytelling um, and high kind of high effort content, like high value content or whatever, definitely go check him out. I was, I was super, super impressed. Uh, but anyway, let's have a look at the six he's bringing. You can see the six I'm bringing the items next to them. I did make some trades. Um, probably done something at the beginning of this video about the trades. I hadn't thought about that before I sat down to record. You, you'll know if I have or, or haven't. I don't know. Right. So, editing Matthew here. Um, got, to, got to clarify some things. We have made some trades, as I probably just said, through the power of editing. You'll understand. I don't know. Just going to cut away and qu quickly explain things to you. So, unfortunately, I was fooled. I was hoodwinked. All of you have been betrayed. What I thought was a Whimsicott during the draft turned out to be a Clefable. The way it was explained to me was that Whimsicott had had some time out of the game, you know, wasn't included in the base game, came back with a DLC. She had put on a bit of weight in that time. She was struggling, but she was getting back to her A game. Turns out it was just a Clefable. I was lied to. So as soon as I found this out, as soon as this revelation hit me, I dropped Clefable naturally. Because of that, we also had to drop Ernest. He hadn't come to any games. We should make him shiny because shiny bronze looks better. He hadn't come to any games. It doesn't really matter, but I feel sorry for him. He didn't get to do anything. He's a bit of a coward. He's gone. He's off the team. I had to get rid of this absolute snake. So this guy had to go as well to make it viable. This knobhead, he could not hit a good impact to save his life. He already cost me playoffs the first time I drafted him way back in like 20... 16, 17, 18, I don't know. Many years ago, before some of you were born... He missed a Giga Impact on a Dragonite, which clicked DD and won the game. So, can't stand this guy. He's a prick. Should have made my channel Dr. Fucking Whimsicott, because this guy's a knobhead. So, he's off the team. And then, unfortunately, we did have to dress, drop the best dress Pokemon in the game. No doubt. This guy, look at that coat. Fashionista. He looks great. He looks sensational. Look at those little bejeweled sequiny bits. Awesome. He had to go um, for the points. Very sorry. He's obviously powerful. Would have put in a lot of work, but... The team comes first. He understands that, so his pupa's gone. First thing we picked up, we have Samson here, the Grim Snarl. Um, I think this is basically a Whimsicott, but ugly. If you look at the move set, you look at the ability, you know, this is just a Whimsicott, but ugly. So it's like Whimsicott's like older, but you know the meme where it's like the girl you like, and then like her brother, the boy she likes, whatever. This is the brother, right? This is the older brother that wants to kill you. Um, but you know, maybe, maybe he can pretend to be a Whimsicott. It's just, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we picked up Tyranitar. Always really like Tyranitar. This one's like, it's like metal evolution thing. I don't really understand it, but always really like Tyranitar. Good man. Drafted it a bunch of times. Always does well for me. Can't see anything wrong with this. We probably need another dark type to back up Chi Yu. I guess we've got three, but that's fine. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And then the new Terra user on the team, we have Amulet, the Rabska. Pretty excited for this one. This should be shiny, but I don't think it's shiny here. No, you can't see it's shiny. So sad. Oh, whatever. This guy, Terra Fighting as well as Bug and Psychic, might not come to any games because we've only got like two games left of the season. Um, but, you know, might, might, might win finals for us. Who knows? It's a bug. Which means it resists ground because we lost bronze on which was a ground immunity so i was like i need to resist or be immune to ground otherwise it's just dragonite so we got rabska great ground resist easily switches in on mam swine yeah i'll go on with the battle now let's see 
Uh, good luck, have fun to Dave, by the way. Uh, so the Thunderous Incarna is here. And the Pufferfish is here. Instead of Jirachi and the Torn. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, no Jirachi does surprise me a little bit. Um, that's kind of good. Did I prep for the puffer fish? I don't know if I knew, if I saw that in prep, looking at the set that I've brought on my ostrich. I don't think I remember that he had that. Um, I think the sash lead looks pretty good. If he scarf, ceaseless edge is about the worst probable situation I can think of. Scarf, stone axe would also not be great. But that's about it. That's about it that I can really think of that would be too problematic. Um, I can't remember my set on the um, on the Aspartha. Do I have anything for the fish? Did I just say fuck it? Like it's a fish. I don't think I knew he had the fish. Did he make trades for the fish? I didn't check. Obviously, I built this team a while ago. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. we'll uh, we'll, we don't need to pay too much attention to that. Okay, this thing being the lead. It's not too bad, actually. Let's spike up. Uh, so the goal of this game is really to get Chi Yu in a position where it can try and sweep Scarf Chi Yu. Looking at his potential Scarfers, I don't know all of his speed tiers um, because I don't know Gen 9. I'm not sure it's real. Like, let me know down in the comments below. Am I the only one that suspects Gen 9 might be a myth? Like, it might just not really exist. I have my suspicions. Um... That's pretty funny. That might actually want. I kind of would have liked to have gone for a Destiny Bond there. Can't now. Um, it'd be funny if I walled him. He probably has to U-turn out. I don't think he has any any removal on his team. Anyway, yeah, I'm starting to think that Gen Nine is just a fever dream. Like I feel completely disconnected from Gen Nine in so many ways that my only like logical conclusion I can reach is that it's just not real. Uh, it's never actually existed. And it's all a big conspiracy created by a game freak in order to somehow generate more money. It's really sad. I've actually, as part of my PhD recently, I've been doing uh, some reading around Pokemon. I've been writing about Pokemon, which is pretty fun. Um, but I, w I was reading about the uh, Satoshi Tajiri, I think that's right, uh, who I think initially created Pokemon. I, we all talk about Masuda all the time, but this guy Tajiri seems to have, have been the original creator. I, I haven't done loads of research into that side of things, so uh, I could be wrong there, but... Do we think? Well, I should debond. Because if he's Scarf, yeah, Scarf Stone Axe is fine. I go down. Like, I kind of wanted to go Kokwavo there, predicting that. <laughs> predicting that to be Scarf, but um, it's fine. The Cursed Body Pop is kind of funny. Um, so I could go into Kokwavo. Try and get a spin-off. Obviously, if he goes Annihilate, he takes two layers of rocks and then an Aqua Step, which is not great for him. But he can spin block with that. Um, he, he is now just completely, like, cannot do anything, though, right? So, like, if I just go into this and Dragon Dance... That seems quite bad for him if I go into this Dragon Dance. Um... Can I do some Magnet Volt switch? No, I can't. Go into this and overheat. No, I like this. Cleavor is faster than Dragonite, right? Oh, I forgot about the rocks. I forgot Stone Axe did that. That was a big misplay. A big, big misplay. I needed to rapid spin before that really sucks before bringing this in oh that's a huge misplay i completely forgot stone axe did that see gen 9 it's not real i'm telling you anyway i was telling you so i was reading about uh tajiri who made pokemon and like why he made it and he was talking about the fact that um so he just stops to struggle with this 
Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take a kill. That's fine. I really fucked that by, uh... <sighs> by going into thing. And anyway, Tajiri was saying, in his original, like, concept for the Pokemon games, he was talking about the fact that, uh, you, you had to trade Pokemon to, like, evolve them and, uh, to get, like, version exclusives and stuff like that. And it was so interesting reading about it because what, like, undoubtedly now, right, the Game Freak and the Pokemon franchise, I think by fans of the franchise, such as you and me, I think are seen as quite kind of greedy and money grabby in some ways. And I think that the kind of concept of two games split across, or the Pokedex being split across two games, rather than just releasing one, like Legends Arceus, right, which was just one complete version. I think there's a feeling that, like, it's somehow, um... It's all about the money, right? Jesse J. Um, what can this thing do to me? Is he just going to go for his own hazard stack? I think I'm just going to Dragon Dance. I don't know what he does here. Is he Haze? Might be Haze. I'm confused. I don't know why this came in. I've made my own confusing plays, so I fucking go into this and rocks up. But yeah, we think of I think we think of Game Freak and the Pokemon games or, or the way that they're released, the way that they're marketed, is, is kind of a bit money grabby and we just think, you know, release one full game, stop the DLC, we remember the glory days of whatever, but um oh I'm, that's kinda of fine. Um But I think that like it's kinda of interesting because I think I think I just wanna fire from an earthquake here. Uh because I think that when the games were released, like reading what Tajiri had to say was that his idea was that the Game Boy Link cable had been released for the Game Boy, but like most games in the Game Boy weren't multiplayer back then. And his idea was like, well, what if I made if I made use of this Link cable that no one else was making use of? And rather than just doing battling, like rather than just doing competitiveness, what if I made it so that um uh, so that players were linking up. In other words, I think his exact wording was something like, what about uh, like co uh, communication over competition? So what if I was encouraging children, uh, the player base, to link and, and, and play together ra uh, and communicate with each other rather than just fight each other? Um, and so that's why he initially wanted to split the Pokedex, was this idea of like, I think I could do something cool with this where... I can encourage children to cooperate and to want to play the game together. And that's so far removed from where we are now, where we think of these games as, like I say, kind of a money grab, right? Um, yeah, I, I, sorry, I'm, I'm just thinking, trying to think a, a little bit ahead now with where we're at, because that, that dra going in with Dragonite on Rocks was such a bad, bad misplay by me. I should have gone into the Kukwavo, like I said, and... Um, I should have clicked the rapid spin. I think. Yeah. Because if you'd gone it well Maybe I should just aqua stepped into the incoming annihilate. It depends how bulky the annihilate is, right? If I had S D on Kukwavo, it would have been really good. Ah, I'm getting caught up in what would have been. I think this is fine. Hmm. This is more than fine, this is great. I retract that statement. Holy AV. So this can kill the um, Thundy and the other things. So this is still, still kind of useful. Do I taunt? Well, he's not bulk up because he's AV'd as shit. I can't really afford to Volt Switch. So I think my only recourse is to Thunderbolt. Yeah. I think I had another play there. That's going to drop me. Aftermath. Nice. Okay. That's not too bad, actually. I'm just trying to think how we win this endgame. Kukwavo Rapid Spin actually... Mm, no, because I haven't broken the Sylveon with the Dragonite like I was supposed to. Uh, it obviously has to be this that comes in next. Do you think a Life Orb Dazzling Gleam kills the... Uh... 
After spikes, maybe. I can afford to Shadow Ball here. It will kill this thing. It would get chip off on anything that I still wanted to switch him. If he, if he would if he would go hard into Samurott. What is the is is this is the Cyndaquil not the Cyndaquil, the the fish the puffer fish man? What is he? Is he water type? I don't know what type he is. Okay, big threat removed, so that's really good. Are we gonna get that end game Chiyu like we wanted though? It's looking tough. It's looking really tough. I think my misplay with the Dragonite because I needed to break the Sylveon with the Dragonite. He can go into the... If it's Scarf Thunderous as well. I think this thing has to be my win con. Which means I need Chip Off on the Sylveon. Probably just one more rock, uh, spike switch in from the Samurott. So if it goes hard Samurott here rather than the Sylveon, that would be good, I think. Because then I could bring in Quaquavel. I wish Quaquavel had G-Turn, but I could potentially Rapid Spin. Hmm. I think I would need to Wave Crash to hit the Sylveon. Yeah, so I think that's good. I think that's like preferable for me. I'm just trying to think how I position an endgame here. Uh, we can pop off the Citrus Berry Acrobatics, but without having broken... Like, the game plan really was, like, Dragonite needed to break the Sylveon. Because if Dragonite broke the Sylveon, then look at my team. Like, potentially Lumino Crash could, could pop off. Like, I know Lumino Crash isn't resisted by Sylveon, but Sylveon's so naturally Spadef is obnoxious for the, uh, for the Ostrich. Uh, Flamethrower could pop off. Again, not that Sylveon resists, but it's especially very bulky. And the Kukwavel, even, uh, could potentially have picked up, like, a Moxie Boosting Sweep. Um... Yes, yeah, so he's gonna get his spikes up. So if I if I if he goes Sylveon, no, I think I want to get the hazards down. Do I? Does the HP matter that much on anything? I just I think he's going Quillfish, and so I kind of just want to get the speed boost. To yeah 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 okay perfect. Good, that's exactly what I was hoping. Perfect, because now I get two speed boosts. So even if he's... It's okay, because my attack will get... Oh, yeah. Will this kill, actually? Oh, I don't know if the... Yeah, because he's not water type, right? So the Aqua Step should kill. Right? Or do I, on the poison, on the, on the potential toxic, do I go hard into you? Think, think, think. I think we're close to winning with the Ostrich. I think I want to get the speed boost. That way I outspeed Scarf Thunderous. Could be double Scarf with the Samurai being Scarf as well. And if he if he puts me into the range of my Citrus Berry, then I get the boosted aqua, uh, Acrobat. I don't need the boost Acrobatics. What am I talking about? That's useless now. Um, oh, what terror! Fine, that's fine. Glad I didn't go for the CC. If it's Terror Blast, I probably die. Unless this kills, which I'm hoping it does, right? doesn't okay so I probably die so probably is no it's just toxic that's fine then so now on the potential bar barrage no I think I just stay in the aqua step again I really wish I had SD on this set if I had SD there into the aqua step game instead of acrobatics that would have been so good it's okay so we aqua step again gets us back to neutral health then Sylveon comes in neutral attack sorry Sylveon comes in, I think I have to just Aqua Step the Sylveon. Can it just wish stall me? Maybe I should maybe I should have gone into Chiyu. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oh, that's huge. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Why? Suck a... No, it all died. So, 100% Aqua Step here. He has to wish here. Then, excuse me, on the Protect turn. Oh, Reflect! That's really bad. He was just greens on this the whole time. Ooh, that's really bad. Um, he he has to have light screen. We could potentially stall out. I can't stall out seven turns. Yeah, I got my positioning wrong, I think. I think I had to go into Chi Yu on the Toxic. Yeah, the light screen comes out. Hmm. I'm just trying to think, is there, how, how do we win? I apologize for going quiet. I'm just trying to think, how do we win here? So he does switch. Who's he, who's he going into? Because I so nearly hit... No, no, okay. I was like, do I hit the close combat in case he tries to stall out a turn by going into water type? But I thought, like, that doesn't make too much sense. Um, okay. So that's one turn of light screen gone, right? Two will go this turn. I could then go into the Aspire Throw, click Protect, that would be three. I could then go into Chi Yu, that would be four. And then I could go into the Aspire Throw again, and that would be click Protect, and that would be the fifth. Ah, oh, this isn't, this is Boots. But I do need Chip on this for everything else. So, um, he probably just sacks the Sylvie on here. Maybe I should have... Ah. I probably should have switched predicting the Sylveon sack. You know, when there's a Dark Force flinch, there's a way. Okay, no, he does give me damage on this. That's pretty huge. And we crit through the fucking Reflect. That's pretty huge. I mean, you click enough moves. Oh. Can that Oko Chi Yu? Doesn't Chi Yu have decent special bulk? I'm still learning a lot of these Pokemon. I feel like Chi Yu has decent special bulk, right? Um, this is intense, man. I d this is all I've got, right? I don't know who wins this. I don't know if this thing can Oko me. I really don't know. I'm gonna Dark Pulse here. Hmm. Actually, I think Samurai gets Sucker Punch, right? I'm. So, I, I really need to look up what Pokemon get when I'm building. Oh, that might kill me. Yeah, that might do it. No, we hang on. Oh. Yes, but if Samurai gets Sucker Punch, then none of this matters. I didn't think about that at any point did I think about that. I know it gets Knock Off. Is Ceaseless Edge a Dark-type move? He, does he have Sucker Punch? Is that a thing that he's running? Oh, this is intense, man. I wish that Gen 9 wasn't a myth and I knew what things did. Um, does this get, oh, it gets Aqua Jet. Ah, oh, I get Sucker Punch, so it's GG anyway. It's GG anyway. It's GG anyway. Okay, he was always fine. Uh, once I let the Kokwabo go down, he had this. All right, well that's a learning. That's a that's a, <laughs> a learning experience for me. I didn't know that. Ah, um, oh, that sucks.
If I had sub... I mean, he always just... Sucker punches, right? Does he fear sub? Is there, like... I think I just... I, I don't have another play, do I? I'm like... Okay, so he does fear the sub. If this... <laughs> it's zero damage. Yeah, with the light screen up, I was fucked anyway. Okay, GG to... Uh... It's a Shroom Raver to Dave. That was a really fun game. I, I learned some stuff. I learned some stuff. Uh, Chiyu is physically bulky. Stone Axe, and I really need to fucking remember this, sets up Stealth Rocks. Idiot. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and Hisuian Samurai gets Sucker Punch. I feel like regular Samurai gets Sucker Punch now I think about it. I don't know. It definitely gets Aqua Jet. I've ran Swords Dance regular Samurai in low tier leagues before in LTC. I can't remember now. Uh, either way, GG Tim. That was a very, that was like a very close game. The screens at the end. If I had gone to you on the toxic from the quillfish, um, and flamethrowered, Quarkarvel would have stayed stayed healthy. I think there was an end sequence there where we could have won. Boots um, on thunderous was always going to be a slight problem. Hmm. But I think there was an end sequence there where we could have won. Um, even after I, f I fucked up the Dragonite. Had I got the Dragonite right, this game could have been a lot better. Hmm. Okay. Some, some good, some good knowledge to take into next week. Oh, well. We couldn't get the Chiyu, Scarf Chiyu to do too much. I did pick up 1k, live in the Focus Blast, which was pretty nice, to be fair. Um, but yeah, GG to, to Dave. We'll be back next week. I think we need, like, one win out of our remaining two, I think we have after this, to, like, lock playoffs, basically. Um, so... Flip of a coin, 50-50 chance. We could still make playoffs with our record, even if we lost both of them, I think. But we want to go in in style, right? So hopefully we can pick up a win next week. I'll leave it here. Thank you so much for flipping around with me, and I'll catch you again next time.